Ever felt like your brain was fried, trouble focusing, no motivation, or just uninspired? Well, by the end of this video, I will give you an easy way to get hyper-focused, motivated, and inspired whenever you want. I will teach you how to reach inside you and access parts of your brain to find that creative and inspired space, solve all your problems, help you achieve all your goals, and give your brain what it wants. No, not just what it wants, but what it needs. I'm going to show you how to get into something called wakeful rest. Doesn't wakeful rest sound good? It certainly does to me. So let's start with a story I think a lot of us can relate to. I am usually super busy. This is what my day looks like. I wake up, I have coffee, I review emails, go to the bathroom, exercise, shower, get the kids up, make breakfast, take kids to school, work all day, pick up kids, kids homework, cook dinner, eat dinner, coach kids sports teams, come home, make kids another dinner, me time, which is about 30 minutes, then I sleep. One task to the next, busy, busy, busy. I'm not complaining, I like being busy. Then one day something very wonderful happened. My family and I welcomed another baby into this world, number three to the clan. And with having another baby, I got all that wonderful paternity leave. I could be home with my wife and our new little one. This was a big change to my schedule of activities, right? A big part of my day was going to work, was now replaced with being at home with the baby very sleepy newborn. I still had all my other duties which kept me busy as usual, but there was this gap now, some downtime during the day. So here I was, sitting at home on the couch, baby sleeping, twiddling my thumbs and thinking, well, let's call it what it was, I was bored. With all this time mindlessly sitting there, something very interesting began to happen. First, I started brainstorming on new video ideas and writing the scripts for them. I had some really cool ideas that seemed to be coming out of nowhere, ideas where they were just coming fast, one after the other. I then became more interested in learning more about nutrition and eating healthier. I got so motivated to eat well that I started making this vegetable slaw once a week with 20 different veggies in it. My stomach loves me for it. I thought about better ways I could connect with my kids and from the suggestion of my wife we now pray together every night. I looked into how to deal with anger, impatience, and intolerance. I wanted to be a better human, more loving, and attentive person. What was going on with me? Why was I so inspired and motivated to do and try all these new things? Well, I discovered what was happening to me after listening to a psychologist. Before I get into what was happening in my brain, I urge you to stick around because I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions on how you can access the creative and inspired space on demand, as well as a game you can play with your brain called Word Babbling, which hits the reset button so you can get refocused, re-inspired, in the moment, at any moment. Okay, so I was so used to being busy much of my time, going from one thing to the next. My brain was rapidly shifting from one activity to the next. That certain areas of my brain were being used far too much. Then with paternity leave, I was faced with some idle time, sitting there, doing nothing, bored, and in doing nothing, all of a sudden got inspired, problem solved, learned, and became really motivated. Kind of weird, right? It is a very busy place up here. Even when you don't think you are using it, you are. You may have heard that we only use 10% of our brains. Nope. Not true, we use all of it. Even when we are sleeping, we are using our brain. It is always active. Our brain is the most complex structure we know. And when we are awake and on task, we are constantly distracted. We are getting senses that are picking up on things everywhere and processing that information. What did you see out the corner of your eye? Did you hear that? What's that smell? I feel an itch on my back. Is that a tick or is that a flea? Oh, my tummy just grumbled. I really have to pass gas, but my wife is sitting right next to me. Should I let it out quietly and blame the dog? Sometimes I might be thinking that I am multitasking too. Who thinks they can do more than one thing at one time? Ever watch TV while scrolling through your phone? Guilty. Studies suggest that only 2.5% of the population can multitask. So if we aren't doing two things at once, in this case of the cell phone and watching TV, what's happening? Well, we are rapidly shifting our attention from one thing to the next, back and forth. This rapid shifting of attention uses up energy, and lots of it. We are using glucose, burning up energy to change the subject in our brains. Our brains are very metabolically active, by the way. We use lots of sugar up here. The glucose we are burning is the energy. It is the same energy we need, use to, we need to use in order to focus. So here we are burning up through our resources, jumping from one activity to the next, 
can't focus and it acts like a negative feedback loop and we lose more and more focus. We shift from one activity to the other even more and we burn even more glucose. It's a doom loop cycle. It goes on and on like that and you get into a destructive cycle called brain fatigue. It's exhausting, right? So how do we get out of this destructive cycle? Well, when you allow your mind to get quiet, you activate different parts of your brain, areas of your brain that are active when you are in a state called wakeful rest. Have you ever daydreamed before? This is wakeful rest. Spacing out on your drive home from work, in the shower taking a moment as the warm water washes over you, on the pooper just enjoying yourself thinking about whatever. This is when these moments of inspiration and focus come. You are creative, inspired, and relaxed. This is when wakeful rest is engaged, when your brain has nothing better to do, and your brain loves you for it. You access repressed memories, you tap into repressed emotions, and you problem solve. In order to stop this vicious cycle of distraction, this distracted brain in an ever-increasing, distracting world, we need to engage this wakeful rest. So how can we do that? Well, I can tell you mindfulness, meditation, and exercise exercise all work because they do. They serve to clean up our brains and organize our minds, but I'm not going to talk about these things today. I'm going to talk about something different and don't laugh. I'm going to teach you how to exercise mindlessness because when we get into this state, creativity and problem solving are optimized. It's like when Neo was finally able to get out of the matrix and he became unstoppable. This is what I want you to do. I want you to daydream. Yep, you heard me, daydream. I'll catch myself daydreaming and instantly snap back to reality because I'm busy with lots of things to do. I have no time to daydream. You ever notice, or maybe it's just me, that daydreaming almost has a negative connotation to it? You ever hear, oh, he's a dreamer, or why is that dude just staring off into space? That's creepy. Stop doing that. Well, turns out daydreaming is so good for your brain. Now you're probably wondering, well, how do I daydream? This is how. One, take a seat, stare into the middle distance and let your mind wander with purpose. Two, choose the right time of day when you have free time. Three, find the right location. Four, pick a daydream topic. It can be anything, vacation to Hawaii, playing with your children and wife, anything. Just start with something you can fantasize about. Five, know what you want to achieve from your daydream. Do you want to solve a problem, find a solution, find focus, get inspired, etc. So here's something really cool and much more concrete, meaning an easy to follow way to get engage wakeful rest, coined by psychologist Sasha Hamdani, I believe. She calls it word babbling, and this is how you word babble. Think of a word, grab onto something you see around you. Right now I'm looking at the camera. So camera, pictures, family, love, Valentine's Day, chocolates, dog, fluffy bank blanket, blanket, warm, fire, camping, trees. So you see how one word brings me to the next? It's unique to my thinking and it sparks the creative centers in my brain. When you take the time to stop and do this and then return to what you were doing before, you are going to be much more focused. You have engaged regions of your brain and wakeful rest. Your brain needs these breaks. Our brains are very complex. They've evolved that way. Back in the caveman days, we were bored and certainly much less stimulated than today. Look around you now, it's almost like society is doing every everything it can to not allow us to be bored and inspired. There are so many distractions and so much stimulation that keeps the brain engaged. Our brains are exhausted, folks. We must find time in the day to zone out, daydream, become mindless, or have no mind. We must schedule a time in the day to do this. The difference is surviving to thriving. I hope you got something out of this. Hit that like and subscribe button, please. My name is Chris, and this is Health Revival, and I'm out.